All right, I'm going to walk through the data mapping sheet. This is a key tool, uh, probably one of the most critical tools or maybe the most critical tool to use on a complex integration project. This is where you're integrating a different software platform with SimCloud, leveraging the SimCloud API. Uh, so an example might be integrating an ERP system with SimCloud. If you're integrating an ERP that we don't have a standard connector for, and you're taking on the integration project, or perhaps you've got a retail e-commerce site on Shopify or BigCommerce, and you're using the SimCloud platform as a cloud data hub to push orders into, which would then sync uh, into the ERP system. Uh, so this document uh, basically is produced by the solution architect. And I'm going to walk over here just to give you context. Uh, there's a separate article and video on the solution architect, which I'm on. Uh, but basically, the output of this document, the data mapping sheet, is really going to identify technically what has to be done. Uh, it's giving the what needs to be done, and the technical planner and developers will determine how to actually do it. Um, so this is dry this is basically a technical document but it's driven and to reflect all of the business needs and requirements and it also represents the solution architect having deep domain knowledge of both platforms so in an integration uh, if you're syncing SimCloud with the erp system um, let's say the erp to give an analogy speaks german and SimCloud speaks french the solution architect is going to have to be fluent in both languages they may leverage, leverage experts in each language, which would be a consultant over here and a consultant over here, or they may already have expertise in one of these platforms. That's very typical for a solution architect and then leverage the expertise of someone else. Uh, but they're basically making a business plan that's going to work to move the data back and forth between these platforms. And this mapping document is describing what the data is, exactly what data tables or data entities are going to move and also down to the field level, what's going to happen field by field, uh, because they've got to make sure that the complex stuff that's going on to translate from German to French is actually going to work when the technical people deliver it. Um, so uh, what we've got here, this data mapping sheet, um, uh, again, this is one of the key documents. We've got an example that uh, we put on a public Google Drive that you can download and uh, see. And I'll basically just walk you through it. There's some screenshots down below, and this just provides some descriptions if you happen to land on this to get back to the article. Uh, the key things to, to this is the, the article you're on, the data mapping sheet, the solution architect rolls another key article and video uh, to read and listen to. But basically what you're going to do, you don't have to use this template. You can use any template you want, but something like this needs to be produced. Uh, so the first thing is you're going to have a single worksheet uh, in your, uh, in your uh, we, we recommend using some sort of a spreadsheet program like Excel or Google Sheets. But you're going to have one worksheet that just lists the table to table or data entity to data entity mappings. Uh, so this would be a fairly complex integration. You can see there's some phases here. That's part of what the solution architect's going to do is decide, hey, there's a there's a whole field we can mow down, but we're going to start and the business can get value out of this first phase of set of data uh, entities that are going to sync. Uh, so there's a lots of stuff to consider in the technical plan and strategy document on data syncing system of record. Do you want one way sync, two way sync? Um, uh, the, and there's multiple factors in there that are described. Uh, it, for, for the purposes of here, you mainly need to map out and say, for example, ERP's got um, the ERP system, let's say the table's called AR customer, and you're going to pull data from the ERP system, uh, which might be your system of record, and sync it into the accounts table uh, using the account uh, API endpoint. Uh, on SimCloud that's going to drop records into that table. So when you go to the endpoint documentation on the on the account, uh, uh, that, that resource documentation, which is inside the worker portal, you'll be able to see the data payload and field de uh, descriptions and things like that. You can also use a SimCloud consultant to get into the nuances of stuff, particularly things that have uh, sensitive logic, like seeing things that would control tax calculations or pricing calculations uh, for customers, things like that. Uh, you'll want to understand the tricky logic. That's the responsibility of the solution architect as they're mapping this out. But the first thing you're doing is just saying, hey, what are the data entities we need to map? And we've got a playbook, and this is actually some stuff listed here for an ERP integration. If someone's uh, writing their own uh, a sync a strategy or, or buying a sync tool and hooking it up, uh, what might happen in a more involved B2B integration uh, with SimCloud? 
Um, so basically that you're, you're gonna, you're gonna map out and then phase and say that this, this data entity on the SIM cloud side, uh, uh, matches up with this data entity on, uh, on the ERP in this case, which is the other platform. Um, and this is basically just saying, what direction is that sync going? So if you're doing bi-directional, you would have two lines here. One's going one way, one's going the other way. You're also gonna have an identification of which field syncing. You don't always sync both field, all fields, uh, both directions. There's comments on, uh, by the way, on best practices and recommendations. A two-way bi-directional sync is one of the more complicated things and generally something you try to avoid unless there's an absolute business need for it. Um, having one system be the system of record and just syncing and replicating the other system is a, a, a much simpler strategy to execute on uh, long-term, just FYI. Uh, but you'll, you'll basically list this stuff out uh, and then uh, for each row here, uh, take this row right here, that's the accounts, the, the two SIM cloud accounts. You can see the direction here. Uh, you're, you're then going to, oh, and this is going to talk about, are we going to add records? Are we going to update records? Are we going to delete records or disable them? And then you might have some notes in here uh, for special things or things that you need to account for uh, related to uh, that sync. And then basically this is going to drive your technical people on saying you're done when all these syncs in phase one uh, are done and executing. And by the way, this is what actually needs to happen when you sync. So you're going to basically pull uh, from each entity that you're syncing, uh, you will have to get field level definitions of the tables you're matching up. So first you got to do discovery and say, hey, what tables am I actually uh, syncing to or moving data to or from? And you can leverage your consultants uh, for help with that on either side. Uh, but then ultimately, in our case, from the resources in our API, you're going to get field level payload or definitions uh, and drop those into a spreadsheet. So for clarity on that, I'm going to go back to the sheet here in a second. <clears throat> I just pulled up the article, which is the, the API introduction article. And down below, it talks about the fact that uh, you have documentation on every endpoint or every resource inside the worker portal once you buy the API. And uh, you'll see uh, there's a, I'm not going to get into what an app authorization is, but when you click on it, it'll show you all of the resources uh, uh, that, that you have available that you can then drill into and get the specific uh, uh, payload uh, definition that's in here. There's also uh, data schemas down at the bottom of this documentation that gets into descriptions on a lot of the, the fields. There's at least a friendly name, uh, but also uh, in some of them, there's help tip style descriptions. Uh, as you're seeing here, uh, this is the product uh, data entity. Uh, that's giving you details of, of uh, uh, per perhaps uh, acceptable uh, values in the field or uh, field lengths, things like that. So basically, you're going to drop that data in and then decide what is the data that I need uh, to drop in this sheet. Now, another uh, helpful resource on the data mapping sheet here, I'm now logged into a worker portal. Uh, in the CRM workspace, uh, for example, you can go into accounts and uh, and actually go edit an account and see the field. Essentially, what you're doing is the API is going to drop data into this table the same way this form is dropping data into the table. Uh, so one of the things you can do uh, that's helpful is uh, you can see uh, uh, basically the, the fields uh, laid out and organized here, uh, but you can do a right click inspect element uh, on this thing and actually drill in uh, through your browser tools and see the actual name of the field. In this case, the field name is, is phone one. So uh, th that's a helpful tool. And in this document, um, uh, on the table sync, we've listed what workspace um, uh, the data entities are in. Uh, some of these don't have forms, but, but some of them do, like the account one that we've just seen. If they have a form, uh, that can be a helpful tool for you to, to get an understanding. And as you're working with the API, you could be pushing data uh, to the API, making uh, uh, ads or updates and, and go into the worker portal and actually actually see the changes 
uh, provided that you're working with safe records or you're on a sandbox environment where you're not messing uh, with production data. That, that would be assuming the site, uh, the SimPod platform is live. Um, but basically, uh, the solution architect, you're going to get intimate knowledge of all the tables and fields on both sides uh, to make sure they line up. And uh, the syncing, when the data actually moves, it's going to produce the business result in that platform uh, that's needed uh, uh, to, to meet the business objectives of the syncing. Um, so uh, a couple things that are notable when you get to field level stuff. You're going to have the ERP field, uh, probably some sort of a field type or field length to know if there's field compatibility issues. Uh, and if you're syncing to SimCloud, for example, there may be some fields that don't exist in the ERP. Maybe you decide that you're, as part of your plan, you're going to create a user defined field and populate it. Maybe you decide you're just, just going to hard code something in your sync to post a value to it. Or maybe you decide that's going to be a field you're not going to touch in SimCloud and it's going to be managed through the worker portal. Um, those are all acceptable outcomes and those are business decisions the solution architect's going to make uh, as they're weighing out all the trade-offs of who has to operate this thing and what needs to happen to make it work. Um, the other thing is, uh, you can see here, uh, this is pulling from stuff that uh, our internal uh, tool uses, uh, but effectively um, uh, we have special logic that we do that's lookup logic or conditional logic that's looking at a value and setting a different value. And that's basically making that German to French translation uh, concept. So uh, the, the concept here would be if the destination table uh, the destination platform is SimCloud and you're going into the accounts table. These are the fields you're going into. This is your field description and type. And then you're deciding what needs to happen if there's special logic that needs to happen. So some of the things that you've got to decide, for example, is if I'm dropping a 150 character field uh, into, that one's 255, so that's fine, but 150 into a 25 character, um, am I going to have to basically do validation or data cleanup on the ERP side to make sure that works and syncs properly? Or is it acceptable to the business to just have the data truncated uh, when, it, uh, when it goes into the system? So these are all decisions, the solution architect, the devil's in the details, and this is where the details are. And uh, what's critically important for planning uh, a successful sync is getting down to this field level and making sure you have a deliberate plan for every single field on every table that's syncing and know that the fields that need to be populated to make the, 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 the destination system run properly uh, are going to be uh, uh, populated correctly. Uh, so the, uh, another good example would be a country code. Uh, for example, if the ERP system didn't enforce uh, ISO 3 country codes like USA or CAN for Canada, for example, uh, then you may have a situation where there's data cleanup that has to happen or you're getting into looking at all the distinct values if it's just free form to type in a country uh, to do translation. A lot of times the data cleanup's easier, but then does the ERP need to add validation to it? Or are you going to take the risk of a user just typing in whatever they want and, and having uh, someone put US America in there and you don't have a lookup for that where uh, the SimCloud system needs the ISO 3 code USA every time in that field. Uh, so those are the things that you would reconcile uh, as you're going through to see if there's incompatibilities, if there's data cleanup, if there's translation needed, uh, custom if logic or conditional logic um, that's going to be used to make the stuff work. So essentially, uh, the scope of the your phase one um, integration is going to be what tables are moving back and forth. And then on each table, getting down to the field level definitions of what's going to happen and then putting commentary or describing what the custom logic is. The technical planner is then going to take that and make sure they buy or build a, a, a sync tool that actually performs all of that logic. And then they may make little tweaks or modifications to this as stuff comes up, or they find out, hey, the date format field in the ERP does not match the date format field that SimCloud has. <clears throat> they may be making small minor adjustments on the fly with that. If there's big stuff, they may come back to you, the solution architect, uh, to make sure that that's been addressed. And uh, in some cases, the solution architect is the technical planner. It's the same person. 
uh, it's key that uh, if that's you, you understand that those are two distinctly different roles and both of them need to be filled well uh, for the integration to work. But um, this is what, in our experience, a successful integration looks like. The devil's in the details and the, this has to be done uh, well and, and with deep understanding of both platforms in order to have a successful integration project and something that avoids having constant pain in the butt loopbacks because things are breaking uh, or not working properly. Uh, you, can cut, you can mow down a big, big chunk of the problems by doing proper, diligent uh, and deep subject matter expertise planning uh, by getting into the into the details on this. And again, on the SimCloud size, we have a pro services practice with uh, consultants that, that uh, very typically we would require time or an allowance be purchased. And it's stuff like this that you're getting into. Hey, can you explain how the pricing engine works and what the tables are and what the fields mean uh, and getting clarity? So if you're translating customer specific pricing from the ERP system, uh, that has one pricing engine to SimCloud's pricing engine, trying to get the same net result price to show up in both platforms, you're going to have a deep understanding of how both pricing engines work and then figure out if you can actually make them work or that sync, or if there's business adjustments, you need to go back to the business people to, uh, uh, to make work. So uh, hopefully that helps, but you're basically going to end up with one tab overall for the table to table or data entity to data entity. Some of them are multi-table and then a individual tab for each one of those rows uh, that's getting into field level definition and describing logic and, and making sure field types match up or, or lengths or whatever else. Uh, for the purposes of this, this is just a separate uh, table to table sync that might be what it looks like if you were integrating a Shopify retail site and wanted to use SimCloud as a cloud data hub to get orders from Shopify into the ERP system that SimCloud's already syncing with, or say shipment data or, or uh, product inventory levels or something that's already syncing from your ERP to SimCloud out. Uh, depending on the ERP system, if they don't have good capabilities, uh, some of the older on-premise systems definitely don't, uh, the, using the SimCloud API is an easier way to get that data in and out. Uh, so this might be a, a, an, an integration project that, that would be for a Shopify to SimCloud integration using it, is SimCloud as a middleman and our order pass through tables, uh, which is this S orders and S order details, just as an example. So again, same concept here, each one of these in phase one, these four, you'd have four more tabs next to this laying out the integration. Uh, for the ERP, you're going to end up having a bunch of tabs depending on what's in the, the, you, the scope of your integration. That's all decided between the solution architect and business stakeholders. What do we actually need in phase one uh, to, to make the thing work? And there's some more commentary on the solution ar ar architect article on that. Uh, but hopefully that helps. Uh, good luck. I'd highly recommend not shortcutting this process. Uh, it's been our experience that this process can make a project go very smooth and quickly uh, and a lack of doing this, not having a written tool is a major red flag uh, or not going into the details and making sure there's a deep understanding of all the tables uh, they're syncing and exactly what the logic's going to do on both sides uh, becomes problematic and ends up with a bunch of loopbacks that gets much, it's more expensive as it gets farther down and you get into users testing it or other people testing. The solution architect can solve all that or a major chunk of it up front by putting together a proper plan right here. So this is uh, this is kind of ground zero and core foundation on success of an integration project. So I can't speak highly enough of how critical uh, this document or something like it and this step is uh, in the planning process. Good luck, and if you need help, uh, feel free to reach out uh, to our pro services group, and they're happy to help you any way they can. Thanks.